I'm finally in the home stretch on this cabinet. I've got the control area completely done. Ended up putting about 10 coats of semi-gloss lacquer on this, sanding between each coat, and the edges of the decals have completely disappeared. I finished off the sides and the front edge. To minimize overspray, I've been covering each side after I finished with it. Otherwise, when like I spray the top, there'd be a mist that would come over the edge and stick to the sides and leave it all rough. Now you have to wait a couple days for the lacquer to fully cure before you can do this, otherwise the paint's really going to stick to it. So that's why it's taken a while. But it's worth it because I'll have to do very little of any rubbing out after the fact. I've been using gloss on a lot of previous projects, but I'm going with semi-gloss on this because recall, if you recall, I'm just putting some new finish over the old finish to get rid of all the alligatoring and fill in the voids and so on. So I'm not trying to make this look brand new. I want to keep kind of an older look to it. So the top is the last thing left to do. I've put on numerous coats. I've been doing some sanding between every two coats. I'm up to a thousand grit sandpaper now, so it's quite smooth. When I sand stuff like this, I just take a piece of sandpaper and fold it over instead of using a sanding block. Because there are some slight undulations to the surface, and a sanding block would really hit those high spots hard and, and wear right through the finish. So, it's kind of this action. It's real gentle. Some of the final stages now. And I'll wipe off that, ex uh, that uh, dust with one of these nice microfiber cloths and then give a little spritz with some compressed air to get rid of every last bit of dust bring this out on the back porch and give it a couple light coats of the semi-gloss and if I'm lucky and nothing lands on this while it's drying I should be done in order to minimize the chance of anything falling on this and to aid in spraying the finish itself I've actually been doing this with the cabinet pretty much vertical. That could be a little tricky though because if you spray it on too heavy you're going to get runs. When you do get runs, just stop. Don't try to touch it. Don't do anything. Just wait for a few hours or overnight for it to cure and then sand it down. If you try touching it you're going to ruin the finish. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Uh, so uh, what I do is I take the can uh, this stuff which has an angle spray nozzle and I orient this so that I'm getting the fan spray going vertically. I get the can oriented and do a little test spray to make sure I know exactly what angle it's spraying out at. There's a little arrow there but always a little test spurt to make sure you've got it right. Hold the can about 10 inches away start spraying off the edge of the cabinet and then slowly bring it into frame or into the spring uh, you know target area and I go right about at that speed so spray and then shh, and then let go when you're off the edge and then come all the way back to the left and start spraying again like a typewriter do not spray left right and then right left because if you do you're gonna get a very wet edge hitting some very wet spray and you're gonna get runs on the, that side so I start off the edge nice steady parallel spray and let go when you're off the edge and then go back and I do about an inch of overlap between the two passes and I go top to bottom and then I walk away <laughs> and I wait about 15 minutes or so between coats and usually every two coats I'll do a little sanding alright that should be the final coat after you spray yours on, it might look a little crappy at first, but that's probably because some areas have started drying faster than others. Some may look dull in some spots and shiny in others. Wait at least half an hour before you make any real judgment on how the final appearance is going to be. And as you can see, it has a nice, even, semi-gloss sheen to it. Alright, the top's dried enough. I can start taking off this painter's tape and newspaper.
it's a little rough right here on the edge where uh, the tape seam met the, uh, the new lacquer. I'll take a little bit of, I think, thousand grit sandpaper, maybe steel wool, and try to dull that down. concern was that some of the spray when I did the top might have leaked under the paper and left the sides rough but now it's nice and smooth. So now that that's done I can finally deal with this melted screen mask. some gooey. Really though it just looks gooey quite hard. And here is the reproduction. A little bit expensive, I suppose, but there's really only one place in the world you can get this from, so it is what it is. Now the challenge would be to get this off. In some spots, it's already separated quite a bit, but this top is on a pretty good. Luckily, uh, warm water is actually a pretty good solvent for this stuff. So I'll pick off what I can and then uh, start working this off with some water. If you recall, I didn't want to remove the CRT because the neck um, mounting system is on there very solidly and I don't want to mess with it. So once I get all that goop off, this has a groove around it that fits right into the cabinet. So it'll fit right in around there and fit snugly against the face of the CRT and support and cushion it at the front end. I've been applying water to this area and yeah, it's starting to soften up, come off. So for a nice change, no need for any nasty solvents or chemicals or anything, just a little H2O. Slowly but surely all this hardened foam is coming off. As it softens from the water, I've been taking a plastic spoon and kind of trying to dig in between the foam and the glass and slowly pick away at it. Got most of it off, shouldn't take too much longer now. I got the last of the crud off the pitcher tube and installed a new mask. Wasn't too hard, uh, just had to slip it in around the sides, get it into that groove, and then it just kind of fell into the place. It's flexible, so you, know, you can kind of mush it around a bit if things aren't quite level and such. I was pleasantly surprised that this pitcher tube is in really good shape. I have a few other sets that use the same type 7JP4, and I've seen some have bubbles on the glass, it's just a manufacturing defect. And others actually have burn holes in the phosphor. You know, sometimes when you turn off these old sets, the picture will collapse to just a bright dot and it then fades away. Well, after days and weeks and months and years, with the picture collapsing to that bright dot in the same spot every time you turn the set off, they start burning a hole through the phosphor at that spot. Well, this doesn't seem to have any of those issues, so I'm hoping it will play quite nicely. All right, so what's left? Well, I need to clean off this piece of plastic that will fit in up like so. It too has some remains of the old mask still clinging to it. 
and overall it's a bit dirty and uh, has some light scratches so I think some Novus polish will take care of that unfortunately in a couple spots down here and here I think that mask reacted with this brass paint that's back sprayed under this clear plastic and it's discolored it here and here but oh well it's just the way it is so that will fit in like so and then the control panel go on like that like so it just leaves one thing which is the bottom of the set Originally it was painted a type of brown and it's flaked off pretty badly in a lot of spots. So I want to paint over that. But I don't want to ruin this nice decal so I think what I'll do is cut a piece of paper exactly the same size and cut some uh, masking tape and just use a little thin edge of the masking tape just enough to hold that piece of paper on to shield this. I'll also take the four feet off, they just held on with a flop lidded screw, and then mask off the sides, and then finally I'll spray the bottom. And what I'm going to try using is this stuff. There was a question recently on the Antique Radio forum about um, what kind of paint is good to spray the undersides and insides of cabinets with, um, and I'd had the same question in the past. I, I tried various things, but nothing had the right color or looked like this original really dull brown. Well, somebody suggested uh, this Rust-Oleum camouflage. Comes in a few different uh, colors. This is the brown. This is what they call ultra flat, so it won't uh, you know reflect light very much at all, which is kind of how this original stuff was. You can see it's all coated on the inside too. And yes, that is asbestos down there that goes right over the ballast tube it gets very very hot as long as you leave it alone don't pick at it or anything I think you're fine just leaving it in place because I am going to be putting a ballast in this set and they do get very hot so you need to have something up there to protect the wood from the heat I masked off the whole cabinet in preparation for painting the bottom including covering up that nice label I then sanded it and what was left of the paint just fell off very easily so I'm pretty much down to bare wood all around. Before I spray on that paint though I do want to seal the wood and to do that I'm just going to use some shellac and brush it on. This old dry wood really soaked up the shellac. I'll let it dry about an hour and then spray on that camouflage brown. I sprayed on a few light coats of the camouflage brown and let it dry overnight then started putting this up back together. I really like the way this stuff looks. It's super flat. So I'll definitely be using this on more future projects. So I started putting this up back together, so the chassis back in. Here are the bolts that hold it in place with the big fender washers. And uh, although I left the original feet on here and they're in decent shape, I put felt pads on the bottom of those so I don't scratch whatever I may be putting this on top of. And finally, here's the set all back together. Masking off some areas while I sprayed others really helped out with the overspray issue. The sides are so smooth, I don't think I'll need to rub them out at all. There's a little bit of roughness in some areas on the top, like this back here. I think what happened is as I sprayed in strips, I started here, 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 here. And by the time I got down to this pass, the top had dried enough that the overspray from spraying here landed on it and left it a little bit rough. So after this cures for a couple of weeks, I will do a light rub out on the top, but I think I can go right to the core, uh, right to the finer grains rather, like the 4F pumice or maybe even right to the rotten stone because it's really not that bad. Here's the other side. The grain looks especially nice on this side, I think. Let's 
So here you can see how that front mask works out. It fills in the area between the CRT and the front plastic. And here's the control area with those decals. I left the logo off in case I need to rub this out. It's so smooth that I probably won't. That simply feeds into these three holes, just a little light tapping. And I'll we'll secure it. So that's it for refinishing the uh, early Motorola VT71 cabinet. I hope you enjoyed this video.